Hello, everybody, and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today, we say hello to Bruno Pedro of Postman, and we will talk about API product management. Hey, Bruno, how are you doing? Hey, Eric. Uh, I'm doing great. Uh, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining. The topic we want to cover today is API product management. I, and I think it's really interesting because a lot of people are talking about API products, but I still think that maybe not as many people are actually practicing API product management as we hear about API products. So I'm wondering, as an introduction, if you had to kind of define, loosely speaking, define API product management, how would you describe what product management is all about? Yeah, that's that's a great uh, great question. Uh, the way I see it, you know, API product management follows, you know, the classic or what you can think of uh, uh, as any type of product management, as for any type of product management, right? <laughs> uh, I also think that uh, any API can be potentially made into a product at some point. So uh, the way you think about APIs in my opinion, uh, should also, you know, embody some form of product management. Uh, I tend to, to kind of follow, you know, some steps that I think helps me, you know, uh, as like a guideline, you know, uh, through, uh, through my journey of, of API product management. So I start by understanding what customers or what the users of potential users of the API would want and what their problems are. So you, you can use, you know, abstractions such as, such as, you know, jobs to be done, you know, interviewing customers and all that. And then once, once you have that uh, uh, crystallized, uh, you understand the problem space and then you, you, you go into a second stage, which uh, is the stage where you design the solution, you design the API. Uh, and on that stage, you can, you know, use at Postman, for example, we, we use Postman collections and mock servers to do that. So you can prototype uh, your API uh, very quickly, very easily. Uh, you can interact with your stakeholders, uh, the people that you interviewed in the first place, and you can test you know, the API solution with them. Uh, once you're happy with, with what you have, you hand that over to an engineering team and they develop you know, uh, the API. So that's when they start in, in introducing, you know, open API definition and more technical elements. Yes. One question that I have here, and I, I found it very interesting the way you said, you know, every, every, any API can become a product. And I think we could talk about this for a long time, but like, I really try to say every API is a product. But of course, you could you could talk about semantics and stuff, right? But my my main point is really to say that almost by definition, in my mind, a product is something that is designed to be readily readily usable, right? Like and and by multiple people, and, and I think I like in certain ways, like I'm I'm hurt by previous jobs in the software industry where there was a big difference between solutions and products. And solutions were always something custom built and products were these kind of things you can give to multiple people. And the question I'm having for you there is like, if you go through this, these initial steps that you were talking about with talking about, you know, jobs to be done and these kind of things, is that something that you typically do with just one customer or one potential user? Or do you have a certain policy around, so to speak, focus groups or something like this? I mean, yeah. The answer to that is, is it depends. <laughs> so it's, it's, <laughs> That's always <yeah>. the answer. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on, on, on the problem and also on, I mean, there's a business value in, in what you're trying to, to solve, right? Uh, and it, it's, I would say it's a factor of the business value and, and, and also um, how the solution that you're building can affect you know, the, the users or, or, or the customers, right? So for example, if, you, if, if the problem itself has a very, very low business value and you have one potential user interested in, in it, probably you're not, going, you're not even going to launch that as, as a product, right? So, but in any case, you go through that thought process to understand that if, if there's value yes. or if there's not enough value. So 
yes, I agree with you. So you kind of apply the same type of methodology to anything. And some of those things survive, you know, <laughs> that, that, <laughs> uh, that step and that, that and yeah. they end, end up in, 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 uh, as, as products. And some other things don't survive that step because they don't have enough value. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's continue. I interrupted you where you were going through the initial stage of design, uh, designing and then defining it. And now let's move on, like what the stages are that, that you typically progress through. Yeah, I was talking. Yeah, I was I was going through the develop stage. So develop stage is when uh, you know typically you you um, you have a team of, of engineers and they they you know they, they implement the the solution that that you identified, and it's, it's at that stage that you know the engineers start interacting with with a more technical artifact, you know, like open API definitions, the code itself you know, uh, ways to, to programmatically test the API and so on. And then at that stage, you know, at some point, uh, uh, you, uh, your team is going to test the API against the, the design and against the initial definition, possibly involving, you know, some stakeholders again at that stage. If everything goes well, you deploy the API. So you, you, you make the API available and uh, people start using it. And I mean, during the during that stage, typically you you use you know the, the usual deployment tools, you know whether like API management solutions, gateways, and and, and all that. And the last stage uh, to complete, you know, the this this process will be the observe stage, where uh, you uh, understand, you get insights, understand how the API is being used. So. Uh, who is using the API, how often, are there errors, and so on and so forth. And, and with that information, you can, you know, close the loop if needed and go back to the first stage and redefine and redesign the API if needed. So it's a little bit like, you know, the more traditional product management, I would say. Yes, and I, I really like to hear that because I, I do think, from my point of view, an, an API is a product like any other product. Maybe not like any other product because it has some special properties, but it is a product. So I think it, it makes a lot of sense to really start with the assumption that, yeah, let's manage it like a product. And then you have a good starting point. Hmm. One thing I'm wondering about, since you are in a position managing the Postman APIs as a product, that you have a lot of users. Postman is very popular. And the thing I'm wondering about then is for the observe stage, how do you do this? With this many users, I get, I guess it's it's maybe a little bit more tricky to really understand what your users are doing, what they like, what they dislike, you know, what you could do better for them. So how do you how do you manage your life in the observe stage, so to speak? Right. I mean, we have many, you know, different sources of, you know, of, you know, gathering information about our, our users, uh, even publicly. So one of the things we do uh, very openly is we have, uh, you know, GitHub. Uh, we use GitHub as one of our support channels and people can go to GitHub and get, they can create an, an issue and they can, you know, from a feature request to complaining about whatever. Uh, and all these is public and open, right? Uh, so that's one of the sources of information. And, and uh, I interact with 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 users on on, on GitHub on a, on a regular basis. And then we have other closed, you know, support channels, as I suppose you know almost every product or every company in the world has. Uh, that's another source of information. So all th these combined give you. Uh, enough information so you can kind of think about new features, enhancements, bug fixes, and, and so on. And then the other the other thing that we do is more proactive uh, um, uh, interaction with, with, with customers. So for example, uh, if we see that someone is having trouble using the API just by observing uh, the usage, uh, their usage patterns, uh, we might get in touch with them and say, hey, we noticed that uh, you were trying to do this or that and you're, it seems that you're having issues. Can we help in any way? And then you start to learn how they are, they're, what they are actually trying to do and how you can help them. 
Uh, another way is identifying usage patterns. Even if they are not producing any errors, you start identifying across all the users kind of usage patterns. Like, for example, imagine three different operations being used in combination uh, many times. And once you start identifying these different patterns, you can um, you can kind of create new features or even improve existing features just based on on those patterns. So if, if, if people use three operations a lot, probably it would help them if they were just a single operation and not three, yeah. you know, this type of things. Uh, but basically, it's a, <laughs> in, in, in summary, it's, it, it's a combination of what you can call or what you can call like inbound communication. So people coming to me asking things and also proactively, you know, with outbound communication, uh, reaching out to people and asking them more about what they are trying to do and if we can help them in better ways. Now I'm getting really interested, but we shouldn't dive into this because this should probably take a long time. But I'm getting really interested in this idea of, you know, like observing the patterns, finding the most popular paths and seeing what are people doing all the time, what are they never doing. Just one, one really, really short question about this. What kind of tools are you using for that? Are there any kind of out of the box tools that you use for this kind of thing? Or is that something where you just kind of look at the logs and then you have built in uh, in-house tooling that does that kind of pattern recognition for you? Yeah, great question. First of all, uh, so people don't freak out, we're not looking at every user <laughs> and, and everything Sorry. that they're doing. I didn't want to imply that. Obviously, uh, as you can imagine. So we, we, we can identify certain patterns. Uh, also, we don't have, you know, this kind of uh, uh, artificial intelligence or whatever you want to call it, way of <sighs> identifying patterns. So what we do... We have a combination of we use you know out of the box tools um, that create you know uh, gather analytics about you know uh, application uh, use uh, API usage, and then we combine it with our own you know sauce internally uh, to produce you know uh, um, certain views of that data. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, but that's cool. I think there there is a lot of opportunity in that and. Like the way you put it, I liked it, you know, when you said like, if there are three operations people use all the time, why don't just turn it into one, right? That sounds of, it's almost like convenience food for API developers, right? It's like, here, it makes it easier for you. It's like, just consume that one. It's nicer, it's easier to digest, so to speak. Yeah, that's, that was just an example, right? But the, there are many different patterns that's, yeah. that, that you, can, you can see happen. So I think we can see that API product management makes a lot of sense. Let's close, and, and thanks a lot for all your insight. Let's close, I have one last question for you. So the thing that you're talking about there is obviously a very high profile API. I mean, the Postman API is one that is used by many, many customers. It's very important for Postman as a company. I'm wondering if, if you were comparing that kind of API, let's say to a less high profile API, but one that is still supposed to be hopefully a valuable API in an organization's ecosystem, but maybe even just internally and not necessarily an externally facing API. How would you say that product management that you would apply to that API compares to what you were just talking about and what you're doing in, in your day job? Yeah, good question. Um, I mean, I would say that if, if this other API, so what you're saying is that you have this other API that somehow is not as important uh, or, I mean, or, the majority of APIs are internal, right? And the majority right. of APIs aren't that much in the center of a company's kind of right. product if, surface, yeah, yeah. right? The Postman if, API, right? Yeah. If the API is, is seen as internal, first of all, I would treat any API, even, even, even an API that people might see as just internal, as potential a potential product. So something that can potentially become exposed to the public in the future. And why do I say this? Because the opportunity, uh, I mean, the cost, sorry, the cost of not opening that door, I believe is much higher 
then treating it as potentially exposable and then having this opportunity in the future if someone wants to. <laughs> so imagine in the future that there's a customer that asks, hey, do you have that as an API? And you say, oh, unfortunately, unfortunately we don't and it's going to take us six months or three months or whatever <laughs> to build it. Mm -hmm. as, as opposed to, oh, yes, sure, uh, we don't have it yet, but, uh, you know, we, a couple of days we... We'll just it. expose it, yeah. Uh -huh. Ex exactly, and that's it. So I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an opportunity there and, and more and more uh, as we grow more into this kind of a programmable, let's say, world, if you want to call it like that. Uh, even more with these no code or low code tools that you know everything you know is interconnected in a in a in a simple way. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities there, and and not doing that uh, close will we'll just close doors. I think in the future. Did I answer the question? I, I, I... Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're? I think what I heard you saying is that yes definitely also do product management for that or have a product perspective on that of course you probably won't invest as much effort but seeing it as something that potentially could become an exposed product is something that is probably a good right. idea right right and i yeah i like that a lot right the last thing that i would that, that i would add to that is if you know uh, uh, parts of your products uh, that are being exposed through any sort of user interface have an API behind the scenes, and they should if they don't. That API itself should also be exposed, right? You should be. My point is that you, sh you, you as a as as a company, uh, you should be able to offer your API. Let's call it na naked. Right? Naked APIs. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of just the, the like what a lot of people would call API first, right? It's like whatever yeah. you do, make exactly. it available as an API. If you also provide a UI, that's fine, but we also want the naked API. Exactly. And naked I think yeah, that's a very good policy. Right. <laughs> okay. So let's close with that. I like I like that idea of naked APIs. Somehow I don't know exactly why, but we can spin it into here. So thanks a lot, Bruno, for joining. I think it was really interesting to talk about API product management. I hope we'll see more of it in the future. And I wish you all the best with managing Postman's API as a product, which so far seems to go really well, from what I can tell. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much for the invitation. And uh, it's been a pleasure. You know, this is really passionate about the, about this, this area. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bruno. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And um, see you soon. Bye-bye.